My wife, Stephanie, runs a business where she helps moms who are struggling with nursing their baby. She is a lactation consultant. Now, one of the things that she offers as a service to her patients is they can log into an online portal in order to ask her questions through a chat. So I thought to myself, Replit would be a perfect tool for the job where we can build an AI powered app without touching code at all, no technical background or experience needed that will help solve this problem. So here's how the app will work. There's an admin area for her to go in and add questions and answers. There's also an area for her to generate access codes for each of her patients. And then her patients can log in with that access code and begin to ask questions through an AI powered app. The system will automatically look through all of her questions and answers and determine if there's a suitable question answer pair based on what the patient asked. If there is, it'll return that result. And if there isn't, it will fall back to an AI powered answer. I'm gonna show you exactly how to create this from scratch using Replit in this video. Okay, so after you create your Replit account, you're gonna see an interface like this where it says start chat in this prompt area. Now, right down here, if we zoom up, we'll see um, the agent will choose for you. That's the default mode where, you know, based on your initial starting prompt, it's gonna choose what type of these apps it's going to create. Um, I already know that I want a modern web app. And I know that because I want people, or my wife rather, wants people to be able to use this app um, on their phones, like in a browser, like in Chrome or Safari, um, their tablets, their computers, their desktops, whether that be Windows, Mac, whatever. So that's the one that we wanna choose because it is a web-based app. People can access it from the web in a browser. So we're gonna choose that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and specify this initial starting prompt. So the starting prompt is this. I want to build a simple web app where patients can log in with a special code my wife gives them. Once logged in, they could chat with an assistant that first checks a list of frequently asked questions my, life, my wife has written. And if it finds a match, it shows that answer. If not, it asks the AI to help answer the question, but the AI's response should have or should start with a disclaimer telling the patient it's AI generated and they should reach out directly for safety. Uh, the app should also let my wife log in as an admin to add or edit the frequently asked questions and issue access codes. The name of the app is Milk Chat. That is a very simple starting prompt and notice it is in natural language. So let's go ahead and click start chat. So we're gonna let this run right now. It does take a little bit of time. I, and you just definitely wanna check back periodically, you know, every minute or two or so. And you'll be surprised just how quickly it actually builds out a whole robust app because in the past, you'd have to be telling a developer what to do. You'd be waiting potentially weeks, if not months. And this will be a few minutes. Now it's going through all these steps here uh, where it says initial version. Um, and it kind of outlines a plan patient login using special access codes, admin login for healthcare provider, FAC database search and matching, AI powered chat assistant, med medical disclaimer, so on and so forth. And right now it's just going to build this out. Now this is just a visual preview. You can't use anything yet, but it will function shortly. And this is what the initial screen will look like. All right, here we are, it is done. It took about, I don't know, I wanna say like five, six minutes or so. Um, now, you're not able to use it right away. Uh, and that's because right here, they might give you instructions. Like for instance, if you're tying into other services like OpenAI because we want an AI component to it, well, you're gonna have to paste in an API key. And it tells you instructions on exactly how to do that. You go to platform.openai.com, go to the API key section and create a new IP, API key rather, and then I uh, copy that API key and paste it right here in this value or in this field. So I've already done that. One thing about API keys, I don't wanna show you what my API key is because then other developers can take it and then charge and make, make me have a huge bill essentially. So these are all my API keys. Um, and what you wanna do is create a new secret key. I'll just call this uh, health app one, create secret key and then copy. Then we're gonna go back and paste that right in and then hit continue. So once you hit continue, it's going to restart the app because it now has the correct API key. So it can 
you know, tie in with OpenAI, and then we're going to give it a test. So this is the part where a light might scare some people because when you test these apps out for the first time, I there may be issues. It may not work. Things may not look right. You might see errors, and it's just a matter of communicating those with the uh, platform right here in the chat, in the agent chat. So let's first go ahead and take a look at you know, any instructions that it has. And it's still currently working, by the way. Um, like for right, right here, it says I open API key is set up. Let me fix the LSP errors and then push the database schema to make sure everything's working properly. It noticed that there's some TypeScript errors. Again, this is stuff that if you're not a coder, you don't have to worry about at all. This is just it thinking and um, attempting to fix any type of errors that show up. Okay, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna try the healthcare provider login. And it did ask me over here, would you like me to show you how to create your first admin account and access codes? Um, we have a register right here for the admin area. I'm assuming I just need to enter, you know, a name here, Stephanie Simon, enter an email, choose a username and a password. Let's see if this work actually works. All right, so that did actually work. So we're logged in. If we click right here, um, that little button, we can just take a look at it in a completely new browser tab. And this is nice. This is a nice, just standard, flat design. Everything's working well, or looks good at least at this point. So now what we can do, like right here, here's uh, where we can add a new FAQ. All right, so add FAQ right up here. Um, let's see here, uh, how many, times should a baby nurse through the night? All right, and I'm just gonna give a, an answer. My wife is not here with me. I'm, I'm going to say they should eat as much as they want. <laughs> okay, um, I guess we can put it in the categories and keywords. So this is interesting because I, I didn't tell it to add categories. I didn't tell it to add keywords. You can tell it to remove these fields. You can say, hey, I don't want keywords. I don't want categories. I, you can remove that and it will remove them. Um, I'm gonna see if I can, if these are required fields. Can I just simply click add fact? No, so these are required fields. I'm going to specify I uh, feeding and then keywords. Okay, I don't have to specify a keyword. Okay, so that's the first one. And we can keep on adding facts here, you know, to really build up the database for all the frequently asked questions. But now we know this right here. I'm just gonna copy this. And now we're gonna go ahead, go back. Uh, let's go to access codes and create generate code. Patient name, I uh, will just say Clarissa. Let's generate the code. Ah, uh-oh. Now, like I said, this is one of those things where, uh-oh, there might be an issue. So if I hit Control Shift I, and we click on console right up here, this tells you if there's any errors. So the server responded with a status code of 400 bad request access codes. Okay, so what I'll do is just copy this and anticipate this happening because it's very rare for uh, an app um, of this complexity to one shot everything perfectly the first time. So you just have to work with it. We go back here. I'm going to say, I tried, let me zoom up. All right, so let's go back to access codes, generate code, Clarissa, generate code. Ah, there we go. All right, so it has been created successfully. Um, it says expired, ah, I can tell why. So um, this means that the timestamp wasn't actually being passed to the, ex the expire field. And what we could do is if I hit F12 for my print, print uh, screen key, you can go ahead and actually create uh, screenshots and pass that along and the AI will be able to look at it. Okay, let's try it again. We're gonna do a generate code. This time, this will be Amy. Um, let's change the uh, date here. This is September, oh, it's August, so that, that'll work. All right, so now this time it is active. See, we just debugged it, awesome. So now what I'll do is copy this and what we could do is go back, let's log out, let's do patient access with the code, hit login, 
And there we go, here's the chat. Let's um, break this out into a new pop-up. And this is what the chat looks like. Hello, I'm here to help answer your questions. I can provide information from our fact database or assist with AI powered responses when needed. All right, so let's go ahead and ask the question that we already have an answer to. And then we're gonna ask a question that we don't have an answer to. So down here, I'm just going to specify uh, how many times should my baby nurse throughout the night? All right, something like that. Hit send. All right, so I was expecting this uh, because getting the AI to respond correctly usually takes a little bit of time, some back and forth um, with Replit. So we can see right here, this is an AI generated response for medical concerns, please, blah, blah, blah. I'm sorry, having tr trouble processing your request right now. Please contact your healthcare provider directly for assistance. Okay, so what we'll do is I'm going to reduce this just a bit and then I'm going to copy or create a screenshot rather of this little dialogue. We're gonna go back and I'm gonna paste this in. All right, I'm gonna ask the same question and we're gonna send it. <laughs> they should eat as much as they want. There we go. Uh, so that works. Now let's ask a question that's not. Um, at what age should a baby wean? All right, look, there we go. This is how, this is what we wanted. This is an AI generated response for medical concerns. Please contact your healthcare provider directly or seek immediate uh, attention. And then weaning typically begins, uh, let's see, around six months old. So there we go. That's how that works. Uh, so now we can build out this entire system where we have all of this, uh, all these frequently asked questions that get asked all the time. And it's going to automatically provide her with Stephanie's approved answers. Otherwise, it'll fall back to an AI response with a disclaimer. That is awesome. So now if I go back, there's some other areas of what we can you know, tinker around with this because obviously you may not like the design and maybe you wanna replace things. So the way you do that is you click on like visual editor and when you click on that little icon right down here, you'll see that it, when you hover over these things, it's, it's, what it's doing is it's selecting all the various HTML elements, the scaffolding, the skeleton. Um, and what it does is it passes that along as information or context. So for instance, this div element, let's say we wanna have a picture of my wife right here instead of this little, um, this little blue icon. Well, we click that, and what's really cool, by the way, is when you click it, it lets you change certain things, like the background color of it. Like I could change this maybe to this color. Look at that, it just automatically changes. You can change some other things too as well, um, you know, about the CSS styling, or we can attach an image right there of my wife, and I'm going to say replace the chat icon div with a circular avatar image of my wife using this photo. Okay, let's choose add to queue and let's see what it does. All right, and there we go. It's updated with her avatar right there. And that's how you can start to make changes to this with this edit feature, which is very, very cool. You can see background transparent right here. We can change all this stuff. And outside of that, you can also prompt changes um, to really change up the, the, the aesthetic. Now over here, we can see there's a theme option. This is where you can make really large changes um, to the general colors. Like for instance, the background color of this app is white. If we want it to be maybe just very slightly light blue, what we could do is bring this um, over here to the blue area, maybe just a tad bit blue like that just barely, maybe we like that. Uh, and it has a bunch of other things, like you can change the topography, um, the, the component section here that has different uh, CSS properties associated. Well, you can see there's a lot of uh, you know, customi customization options for this as much as possible. Um, we can also simulate different screen sizes, like what does this look like on iPhone 16 versus a Pixel 9 Pro, Samsung this, that, all that good stuff. 
And finally, the last thing, you know, after testing it thoroughly and going through it is to deploy it. All right. So when you deploy it, it's going to become ex accessible on the web. And you have some options here in terms of machine power and compute. I'm just going to hit approve here. And by default, they do give you a subdomain. So it would be here, which is called this milk chat one at or dot replit dot app. That would be the actual address. Um, build commands. I'm going to leave these all good. And we're just going to hit deploy. And that is it. So really, really awesome. Now that just anybody with zero technical background, people unlike myself who've been doing this by hand for 25 plus years, can now create apps that are specific, really niche specific needs for their business like my wife. So definitely check out Replit. is a really great no-code AI builder for the modern era of really, you know, that's really gonna just transform the SaaS landscape. A lot of SaaS companies are probably gonna struggle a little bit now that people can create kind of like these personalized apps. So as always, make sure to subscribe and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.